In this dynamic era of healthcare, the demand of the moment is to embrace a proactive stance towards prevention. The Health and Hygiene Council endeavors to shift the paradigm of healthcare from reactive to proactive, ensuring well-being for all. By prioritizing preventive measures, we not only save lives but also enhance quality of life, reduce healthcare costs, allocate resources efficiently, and foster health equity. Preventive measures such as vaccinations, screenings and lifestyle interventions prove to be more economically viable than curative treatments. Preventive measures can significantly elevate the burden of diseases and lead to healthier populations. India's rich heritage includes holistic health practices like yoga, Ayurveda and naturopathy which are globally acknowledged and can be harnessed for preventive health care. To realize the vision of Health for All Hygiene stands as a linchpin in averting public health crisis. In a populous nation like India, the establishment of an expert health council is imperative to guide decisions on health and hygiene. This council will serve as a vital liaison between medical professionals and policy makers, ensuring that evidence-based practices are seamlessly integrated into public policies. Doctors bring specialized knowledge to the table, aiding in the development of comprehensive strategies tailored to India's unique healthcare landscape. The Council critically evaluates research findings, ensuring that policies are grounded in the latest medical insights. Through proactive measures, the Council can help forestall the spread of infections and mitigate the impact of epidemics. Insights from the Council will facilitate effective promotion of healthy hygiene practices, fostering behavioural shifts across diverse communities. The role of the Council will be Policy formulation Guidelines and standards Education and awareness Monitoring and evaluation Emergency preparedness Empowering health through prevention Identifying gaps in the health sector. With a focus on prevention, the Health and Hygiene Council endeavors to empower individuals, communities and nations to embrace a healthier future. Introducing the BSI Health and Hygiene Council members. Dr. Indira Chakravati, Padma Shri 2014, Public Health Specialist. Dr. Praveen Chandra, Padma Shri 2016, Medicine Cardiologist. Dr. Nageshwar Reddy, Padma Shri 2002 and Padma Bhushan 2016, Medicine Gastroenterologist. Dr. Neelam Clare, Padma Bhushan 2014, Medicine Neonatologist. Dr. Dhananjay Divakar Sagde, Padma Shri 2021, Medicine Hematologist. Hello and welcome to a World Health Day special on the Banega Swast India campaign, where we explore key issues and innovations shaping India's well-being and delve into topics crucial for achieving healthier lives for all. The conversation that we start with our Health and Hygiene Council today is going to continue through the season of Banega Swast India through regular interactions with the Council as together we find solutions for how to future-proof India's health and how to drive lessons in good hygiene as the bedrock for good health. By the end of the season, we hope to have ready the Council's first white paper a simple action plan that will be one step forward in answering the question, how do we make India more healthy, more aware and better prepared? Also joining us today is Ravi Bhatnagar, Director of External Affairs and Partnerships, South Asia, RECIT. Thank you all so much for joining us today, for giving us your precious time. It's a pleasure to have you as we're going to be talking about this very, very important step of you know, launching the Health Council on World Health Day. I think to begin with, uh, Dr. Indra, I'd like to start with you quickly, if you can tell us three to five challenges which you face in your uh, field of expertise. Uh, Amik, I think I'll highlight uh, those challenges uh, for which the advance hasn't been too great. Uh, I think the most important public health problem that we have today is diarrhea. 
If you look into the data over the couple of years, you would see that diarrhea hasn't decreased at all. The NFHS 5 clearly indicates that it's actually gone up uh, to 9.2. So therefore, this is something which is very important. Moreover, diarrhea can be much more aggressive to, for example, children with AIDS. Uh, they have 11 times more chance of mortality compared to any normal diarrheic child. So therefore, these are issues which needs to be really looked into. The next uh, most important thing that I think is undernutrition. That's another area where uh, we have not been able to succeed as far as we wanted, especially in children, also in women. And as you know that India now hosts nearly one third of the globally, global underage children. Very high numbers, high stunting, uh, under, underweight. I'm not going to statistics, more than 30%. So these are areas we really have to look into. I'll call out anemia, though it's a part of undernutrition, sure. because anemia is so very important. If you look at the statistics of anemic women, anemic children, anemic infants, uh, I think Dr. Neela will agree with me, they vary from 60 to 70 percent. Okay. So that's a huge problem that we have here. And I think the reasons are multiple. Sure. And so we, it's not just a health issue, it's, it's something else. Mm -hmm. So I think anemia is the third thing that I think is extremely important. The fourth thing that I think is women's health. Mm -hmm. Women's health is something that we have been neglecting a lot. I think the first reason is women don't come out with it. They're shy about it. They don't want to say, look at the anemic women that we have in the country. Look at the menstrual hygiene. I mean, it's so important for yes. women's health, but we, women don't come out of it. And family and community is not really aware. They're shy of the whole thing. Mm. So I think this is something, women's health is something which is extremely important to me as a public health problem. And lastly, though it's not really a public health thing, but acute respiratory diseases. Okay. They're the highest killer disease in the country. And as we know, it transmits very easily. You have the pathogen the mm. droplets on your hand, and that can easily transmit it to one person to another person. During COVID, we found how quickly it transmits. So I think ARI is another, the, the fifth thing which I think the country has to look into. And we have to find out the gaps. And I think you have said undernutrition, malnutrition, anemia. I would like to come to you, Dr. Sakhdev. You are working on this and you are working extensively on the interior. Can you tell us what are the challenges that you think you should emphasis on it? We will see it in the Vyanaadwe and in Orlandi. We have five problems, five problems we see Gee. that it should be properly tackled. First will be iron uh, an anemia. It can, you know, includes this iron deficiency anemia and sickle cell anemia. Second will be what she was studying about hygiene. Gee. Third is malnutrition. Fourth is tuberculosis. It continues to be a major health problem. Yes. And now major health problem is this alcohol and drug abuse. So it is critical that we look at this problem as well. Yes, okay, sure. that's a thing, a very important point, which I think we weren't thinking at that point. If I could come to you, Dr. Reddy here, what do you think are I those think challenges? I think in addition to all that has been said, another very important uh, thing that's happening, very paradoxical in our country, is that as we're controlling infectious diseases, better mm -hmm. hygiene, your campaign did a great job in hygiene standards and all that. We're getting into so-called Western disease. This is a non-communicable disease, they're called. NCDs are becoming more common. Yes. For example, in gastroenterology, we're seeing a large number of fatty liver disease. 30 to 40 percent of Indians, adult Indians have fatty liver disease, which is extremely high, 30 percent. So you see, and that leads to cirrhosis liver, cancers in the liver and so on. Similarly, I think Pravin will tell you about the cardiovascular disease. So we are having a lot of... Uh, increased incidence of coronary artery disease uh, as a part of this and diabetes mellitus is remarkably increasing. A recent yes. survey in Lancet mm -hmm. has shown that 11% of Indians are diabetic yes. and about another 12-13% oh. are pre-diabetic which means 25% of the population is prone to this. So these non-communicable diseases are becoming extremely important and I think as a nation as we start looking at controlling what is conventional a bhi dekhna ki non communicable disease mein kya ho raha hai uske liye bhi controls aana padega is very important mm -hmm. i think those are also very very critical points which yes. you brought out dr reddy uh, dr claire if agar aap hame bata sakte kyunki bacche i mean that's where you know a healthy mother is what leads to birth of a healthy child bachcho ke bare aap neonatology mein kaam karte ho uske bare mein bataiye kya wo panch challenges hain which need to be addressed so um I'll start with the newborn babies because uh, we start our life ko start karte hain. So uh, health of a newborn is dependent on the health of the mother. Yeah. And uh, as we know that uh, 
bringing down neonatal mortality is one of the very important issue if you want to bring down the under 5 child mortality which is mm -hmm. like one of the markers of health mm -hmm. that uh, if you can bring down the under 5 child mortality uh, that's like you know we've really done a socio-economic development mm -hmm. yes so um, uh, we as we know that we have the double burden uh, mm -hmm. we have on one side we have undernutrition okay. we have stunting we have iron deficiency anemia uh, which leads to low birth weight and uh, which leads to prematurity and low birth and prematurity uh, if they uh, go into the phase where they become overweight then they are more prone to develop insulin resistance and diabetes okay. and as we are seeing that in young women we are having uh, now you know the age of marriage is getting delayed they are getting more obese or overweight and hypertension and diabetes is appearing early so that is also affecting the health of the newborn baby then we have on the other side we have the challenge of um, uh, uh, unsafe water uh, hygiene and Wash. sanitation and uh, women are more at risk of sepsis uti and then these babies also are at higher risk of sepsis and dying so it's like a life cycle if we have to improve the neonatal survivals we have to bring down the neonatal mortality we have to ensure a healthy mother yeah. a healthy mother who has access to safe water sanitation hygiene she's less prone to develop infections she's eating the right food she's to ensure less that, prone yeah. to both under so and the over link nutrition. i think you made that very clear how we need to work for the mother and child lastly uh, dr chandra Aap kya kahenge, especially because heart is something which to preventive taur pe dekha jata hai, we can take care of a heart, we can take care of a heart. So okay. tell us about that. Ki dekhe heart jo hai wo uh, jaise ki mana jata hai body ka engine hai aur heart ki jab bimari hoti hai to wo extreme manifestation hota hai which means it can lead to death. To iska matlab ye hai ki heart ko bahut hi bachav ki zarurat hai, usko bahut prevent disease ko heart disease ko prevent karne ki zarurat hai. Wo isliye क्योंकि करीब करीब 70 से 80 परसेंट लोग जिनको हार्ट डिजीज पहली बार होती है वो उसी में उनकी मृत्यु हो जाती है यानी हॉस्पिटल तक पहुंच ही नहीं सकते तो अगर ऐसे लोगों का प्रिवेंशन किया गया होता ऐसे लोगों को पहले ही जान लिया गया होता तो उनकी शायद ये अनटाइमली डेथ नहीं होती और प्राय हम लोग देखते हैं बड़ी कॉमनली वी सी ऑन टेलीविजन और इन द न्यूज दैट समबडी डाइड एट अ यंग एज विदाउट एनी प्रीवियस हिस्ट्री ऑफ हार्ट डिजीज सो इसका मतलब यह है कि वी हैव टू आइडेंटिफाई पीपल इन द सोसाइटी हु आर एट रिस्क ऑफ डेवलपिंग अ हार्ट अटैक और हार्ट डिजीज तो ये चीज की स्टडी हो चुकी है और काफी अच्छे तरीके से इस पे तो बहुत सारे रिस्क कैलकुलेटर्स भी बन गए हैं जिससे कि आदमी ये कैलकुलेट कर सकता है कि उसको हार्ट डिजीज होने की कितनी संभावना है अगले एक साल में या अगले दस साल में एंड दिस इज नोन एज ए एस रिस्क कैलकुलेटर और इससे हम लोग जो नॉर्मल लोग दिखने में हैं सारे लोग उनको हम आइडेंटिफाई कर सकते हैं कि उनमें क्या रिस्क प्रिवेंशन और कैसे करें तो मोटे तौर पे पांच जैसे आपने पूछा पांच क्या मेन फैक्टर्स हैं पांच फैक्टर्स हैं हार्ट डिजीज को प्रिवेंट करने के हाई ब्लड प्रेशर डायबिटीज हाई कोलेस्ट्रॉल लेवल्स स्मोकिंग एंड लैक ऑफ एक्सरसाइज एंड फैमिली हिस्ट्री तो यानी अगर किसी के परिवार में 50 साल या पचपन साल से कम उम्र के किसी को भी हार्ट की प्रॉब्लम हुई है इसके मतलब उसको शुरू से प्रिवेंशन करना होगा दूसरा अगर कोई स्मोकिंग करता है डेफिनेटली हार्ट डिजीज होने की संभावना है उसको अपने स्मोकिंग को रोकना होगा तो स्मोकिंग एज सच आई मस्ट से शुड बी प्रिवेंटेड यानी कि कम्प्लीटली इसको नहीं होना नहीं चाहिए।, चाहिए तीसरा ब्लड प्रेशर कंट्रोल करीब करीब 70 परसेंट लोगों को जिन लोगों को मालूम होता है ब्लड प्रेशर उनको है उनका ब्लड प्रेशर कंट्रोल नहीं होता क्योंकि वो उसको टेस्ट नहीं करते टेस्ट करते हैं तो उनको लगता है दवा खानी पड़ेगी तो ये सारे चैलेंजेस आ जाते हैं और हार्ट इसीलिए हाई ब्लड प्रेशर को साइलेंट किलर माना गया है क्योंकि किसी को पता नहीं है जैसे यहाँ इतने लोग बैठे हैं किस मालूम कि उनका ब्लड प्रेशर कितना है अंडर सेंट्रल चेक ना करें तो सिंपल मेथड्स इन लाइफ विल प्रिवेंट अ हार्ट प्रॉब्लम और ये माना गया है कि अगर डाइट कंट्रोल करें एक्सरसाइज करें ब्लड प्रेशर कंट्रोल करें शुगर कंट्रोल करें और कोलेस्ट्रॉल चेक करें तो 80 परसेंट ऑफ हार्ट डिजीज कैन बी 
prevented. Prevented, okay. More than that, so I, without any medicines. Okay, so I think we prevention rather than curative yeah. approach and I think that brings us to the first part of the council when we've looked at the challenges. Ravi, I want to come to you here before we take a quick break. Um, the concept of Amrit Kal, if I can just ask you about this, obviously it symbolizes auspiciousness, optimal timing. How do you perceive, uh, you know, a campaign like the Banega Swas India campaign, which is in its 10th year, how do you perceive the impact of, that it can bring on public health and the outcome? Very interesting question, Ambika. First of all, uh, thank you so much uh, for having me here. And what I see is like uh, the scaling up of our programs from 10 aspirational districts a decade back to actually covering all the aspirational districts, which are 100 plus in India. We are in uh, one of the toughest geographies. We, uh, we are in all the seven bordering uh, countries, uh, neighborhood districts where we are there. And by the virtue of our program, we have been able to reach around 30 million kids in the last year itself through our programs. The dreams are big and we believe in the foundation of leaving no one behind. And when I say this, it means like uh, maybe it's uh, LGBTQI plus populations, maybe it's uh, indigenous populations, maybe it's uh, mothers, maybe those who are ultra poor, maybe those who are difficult to reach working with all the segments and as the time is changing and uh, this Bharat is not same Bharat, this India is not same India now. There is there are a lot of changes which are very positive in nature in terms of our infrastructure, in terms of the growth, in terms of our GDPs. This is the right time actually when private sector starts working with the public sector, uh, with the caregiver groups and Working on the foundation, which is, uh, which I say it's a framework which will be uh, prevent, promote and treat. Mm. Prevention is amazing, but sometimes you need treatment too. Yes. And uh, to complete the continuum of care, mm. it's important to screen early, inoculate, immunize, uh, referrals, right treatment, and how we make it more faster. It's a huge journey for us. And uh, on this uh, World Health Day, uh, I, I, I can commit one thing, like, you know, from Ditol Banega, First India, uh, we are going to present our uh, recommendations together. Yes. Uh, so that some of those recommendations can be used nationwide. Okay, well on that note, thank you so much Ravi. On that note, we're going to be taking a really short break. When we come back, we're going to be asking our doctors how will the Health and Hygiene Council make an impact and what should be done for this collaboration. So stay tuned. Welcome back. You're watching a special on Banega Swast India on World Health Day. Uh, Dr. Reddy, I want to start with you here looking at solutions or how the council can help. The first thing I want to know is now we have the awarded recognized doctors here today with us across all disciplines. How do we begin a process of effective uh, interdisciplinary collaboration? Yeah. How can the council come in here? Now, I think the council is important in the sense that uh, we are, are separated we are very independent. We can actually decide what is there in the scientific literature, take out what are the things that are going to benefit the country and independently uh, not pressurize, we can actually give advice. Mm -hmm. This interdisciplinary council is very important because you can see the problems are not single speciality. They are, you have pulmonary problems, you have gastrointestinal problems, cardiac problems, problems with neonates, babies, maternity health and so on. Mm -hmm. So we could all come together, look scientifically at what is happening in other parts of the world also, a lot of data that's going to be generated from this and from this based on a very practical view we could give our opinions and suggest to the government agencies and also private agencies and like the good work that we're having in this first Bharat, we can actually give certain guidelines on what has to be done and what can be done in a country and sure. of course set timelines that within a certain period of time mm -hmm. these are followed and I'm sure this will make a remarkable difference in our overall health in the country. I think timelines is something very, very, very important. important. What you said, yeah. of course, it has to be scientific. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Chandra, you want to say something about this? What are your thoughts, uh, Dr. Reddy has said? This is a very important thing that collaboration is very important. Because now, people think that it is a private work, that it is a government work. The government thinks that it is a private 
اپنا صرف ٹریٹمنٹ کرتے ہیں ایجوکیشن میں پارٹیسپیٹ نہیں کرتے بٹ اور یا انڈسٹری جیسے کہ جو انوالو ہے وہ بھی یہ سوچا جاتا تھا کہ یہ صرف سامان بیچ رہے ہیں کوئی آگے فردر اس چیز کو پروموٹ نہیں کر رہے کہ ہیلتھ کیئر ایز اے پالیسی ہیز ٹو بی پروموٹیڈ ایوری ویئر سو آئی تھنک اگر یہ تین جو یہ انسٹیٹیوشنس ہیں پرائیویٹ انسٹیٹیوشنس گورنمنٹ انسٹیٹیوشنس اینڈ انڈسٹری اگر یہ ساتھ میں مل جاتے ہیں اور ایک سوچ بناتے ہیں تو آئی تھنک اس سے زیادہ جو اس کا امپیکٹ ہے اور کسی چیز سے نہیں آ سکتا کیونکہ اس سے کیا ہوگا کہ سوچ بھی پوری بدلے گی اور اس کا امپلیمنٹیشن ہر لیول پہ ہوگا اینڈ جو کہ آپ لوگ بھی یہ کر رہے ہیں کہ اس ساری انفارمیشن کو اور پھیلانا لوگوں کو ایجوکیٹ کرنا اویئرنیس کرنا وہ کافی امپورٹنٹ ہوگا آپ نے جو ایجوکیشن اور اویئرنیس کی بات کی ڈاکٹر اندرا آئی وڈ لائک ٹو کم ٹیکنگ فرام واٹ ڈاکٹر چندرا نے کہا ہے bringing i mean education and awareness is of course key in what ravi said to bring about behavior change now this is the most critical when it comes to prevention mm -hmm. you have worked in the public health for decades now mm -hmm. how do you think the council can help uh, when it comes to prevention um when you think of prevention ambika i think uh, if you think of it the non health issues are possibly far more important in many of these preventive factors um I mean, you, as you know, the Swast Bharat or Dettol Monika Swast Bharat has been going on for 10 years, uh, reaching more than 110 million people across the country. And that's, uh, that has been one of the main objectives of the whole thing, of bringing these non-health issues into the health sector like hygiene. Uh, we know that diarrhea is there, we know undernutrition is there, all these problems have been identified. But I think what we have not really realized that it is the water sector, the sanitation sector, mm. eventually both into the hygiene is the most critical thing if you look into it. That's one of the issues. Very, it's very, very important. Therefore, India with lack of sanitation water is nothing out of the way. It is a problem, global problem. But I think with our Swaj Bharat initiatives, our Jal Jivan Mission initiatives, we have surpassed a lot of, we've increased a lot our sanitation. Water sector has also improved from 16 possibly to 70 percent. So these are issues we have taken care of. But ultimately, hygiene is the crux of the problem. You can give water, you can give sanitation. But unless you maintain hygiene it is it's a very difficult thing to do I say, therefore this sector awareness on hygiene okay. awareness on simple things like hand washing personal hygiene not only these are not only important for uh, for diarrhea also for our con con control of undernutrition yes. control of acute respiratory tract infections like mm -hmm. pneumonia okay, there it is They're very simple very yes. simple issues yes. and i think that is something where we need to even women's health if you look into it mm -hmm. as I mentioned earlier, even there hygiene and sanitation is so very important. Pregnancy is a very important factor. You know, during pregnancy anemia is high, maternal mortality is pretty high in the country and we don't realize that if the mother is not healthy, as Dr. Claire mentioned, the child, child who is born affected. will not have proper cognitive developments, will not have proper physical growth. So I think the whole thing has to be linked to these non-health issues sure, more that's a very than you point. do into direct you know, treatment issues. Okay. I think that's the most critical So factor. prevention you feel non-health yes. issues and, and hygiene the, I, of course plays yes, a very, very critical more, role? I think that's the most critical factor. I think that's what uh, Maniga Swast India has been trying yes. to force into And that's what years. we want to do with this council for, and, and thank you all once again. And I think this council has to take that forward in the target. Yes, in fact, really Really grateful for all of you to come here and you know speak to us about this critical issue dr claire each doctor here you know uh, we have some of you here and some of you will be joining us for the white paper formulation as well each doctor's vision for how we can future proof india can you give us two three uh, you know uh, immediate or definitely things that should be put on the white paper which will make an impact yeah i i think uh, the most important thing uh, which comes from the council, which should come from the council, is the health education. Okay. Because, um, you know, there are a lot of things which we know, but probably still we don't do. And as Ravi very rightly said, that behavior change is one very important area. Like, mm -hmm. you know, uh, we know that open defecation is, um, is, is uh, wrong and it leads to water contamination and it leads to the waterborne diseases. It leads to diarrhea. There are so many diarrheal diseases, uh, diarrheal deaths. It leads to pneumonia. It leads to all kind of infections. There is, you know, uh, children can't go to school. They have to take leave. But still, you know, we've not been able to bring it to zero. Hmm. We built the uh, toilets, but still we could not change the behavior of the people. So probably health education and behavior change is something on which we'll have to work when we talk about the wash, we talk about uh, clean water, we talk about hygiene and sanitation. Mm. I think behavior change is one area where we should really work. 
Second is screening of certain diseases. I okay. think that is something, you know, you can screen early and, uh, you know, uh, one of the area is like, you know, the cancers, like uh, cervical cancer. Screening is very important. Uh, vaccination with H HPV vaccine uh, in the young children in the age group of 11 to 13 years is very important for the prevention of cervical cancer. And again, then screening of the young mothers during the reproductive age is another area. Then there are certain inborn errors in the, uh, there are diseases, there are lethal diseases or diseases which if treated early uh, can have better impact on the health, which is called as newborn screening, okay. which few states in India have started doing and there are a lot of corporate hospitals oh. which are doing. Like in the tribal areas, we've started doing the sickle cell um, anemia screening. Mm. Uh, if you're a carrier and if you marry another carrier, then the, yes, your child fact, has yeah. a chance mm. of having the disease. And we've already done survey and we found that there is increased risk of sickle cell mm. disease and it's a bad disease. Thalassemia is another. So there are a lot of so screening plays errors. a key role along so with behavior change. Screening, promotion of health, early diagnosis, early treatment, and mm -hmm. but, uh, probably for that, uh, the health council can come up with a white paper in each area, whether it is mental health, it is reproductive health, yeah. it's infections, it's cardiovascular, or it is. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Other I think that's that. That is, I think, really this is what we want to do, and that's yeah. why we need your help, Doctor Sagdev. Grassroots, if you talk about where can the council's advice, you know, really bring about a change? What difference uh, can it bring about? अभी सिकल सेल डिसीज का जो ऑल इंडिया प्रोग्राम है हमारे प्रधानमंत्री जी ने बताया कि 2047 तक वे हैव टू कंट्रोल सिकल सेल डिसीज बट फॉर दैट वी शुड हैव होलिस्टिक अप्रोच हाउ टू गो अबाउट इट फर्स्ट मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग इज देयर इज नो नॉलेज और अवेयरनेस अबाउट सिकल सेल डिसीज इज वेरी पुअर इवन इफ द स्क्रीनिंग टेस्ट आर नाउ ऑर्गेनाइज्ड बाय गवर्नमेंट but the man who is doing the testing, he is not aware of what is sickle cell disease. Mm. Because I am telling uh, from my experience, yes. the government is doing in Vyrant also, they, they are going to the colonies and doing the testing. But the patient then, uh, they are giving cart and then they forget about it. Then mm. they don't know what to do. Then they come to me, then this type of, has been told that I am sickle cell disease, what to do. Then we give them counselling. So that is most important, awareness of the sickle cell disease to be told to the community. Hmm. Then what she said, screening of the whole population, neonatal screening is most important. And then to prevent the birth of new sickle cell, that is the pre-marriage counselling. Okay. That is the most important thing which is done. Otherwise, this program will not be successful. Yeah. Because in screening, we get this sickle cell disease patient, then carriers. Hmm. Only 1% is sufferers, but 25% are the carriers of sickle cell disease. So they carry one gene, but they don't suffer from the disease. Hmm. That gene, if two people, husband and wife, have got one gene, that will be transmitted to their children. Yeah. And new sickle cell disease will be born. Very quickly, why do you think, after 10 years of the campaign, why do you think there is a need for a dedicated health and hygiene council? You know, I mean, how can they contribute? Or how can our, this council contribute towards uh, improving healthcare, whether it comes to accessibility, the quality of uh, better healthcare for individuals, as well as communities on a whole? We want to promote the idea of uh, my health, my right. Mm -hmm. okay. And rights come with a lot of responsibilities. Yes. Yeah. And Moreover, like, you know, uh, as Sir rightly mentioned about the counseling services too, mm. that's also a very important agenda, like how, uh, because uh, you are doing the health education, it's important to give the right place to the counselors too in the system. Mm. Because doctors are overburdened. You see the ratio of doctor to the patients. Yeah. It's really skewed. It's important to have a cadre of counselors who support the doctors, mm. who can do the follow-ups, who can take the follow-ups and give the right direction as well as like you know nowadays we talk about uh, Vasudev Kutumbukam all some of the good practices from India which yeah. are been you know which will be formulated by this council on health and hygiene mm. will definitely travel across the globe we need to be prepared enough to look everything from the lens of climate mm. like earlier we have been seeing from the lens of gender yeah. 
from the from the lens of women from the lens of rights from the lens of entitlements from the lens of economics this is the right time we start uh, looking at the lens of you know technology as yeah. well as from the lens of climate change yes. because the heat strokes are increasing the climatic conditions are changing there is a change in the vector cycles for the dengue and malaria mosquitoes you know there are a lot of other changes what we are witnessing डॉक्टर टेटी बहुत लिंक है हाइजीन का और गट हेल्थ के बारे अगर हम बात करें एनीथिंग यू वुड वांट टू ऐड टू व्हाट रवि सेड क्योंकि अगर हम गट माइक्रोम की बात करें आजकल इतना पीपल आर सो मेनी हेल्थ इश्यूज बिकॉज ऑफ गैस्ट्रो बिकॉज एक्चुअली दिस इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट व्हाट रवि मैं अबाउट क्लाइमेट चेंज एंड हेल्थ वी यूज टू एज डॉक्टर्स थिंग हाउ डज इट बॉदर अस ये तो हो रहा हाउ आर विद पेट्रोल कार सिंग एंड ऑल बट स्टैटिस्टिक्स है हॉस्पिटल इंडस्ट्री is the fifth largest contributor to climate change fifth largest can you imagine oh, wow. so it's not just uh, the aeroplanes the flights and all that so mm. now how are we contributing i think there are lot of things happening in hospitals mm. in terms of uh, what is happening in the icus mm. surgeries mm. and endoscopy units and also we are generating lot of this carbon footprints mm. especially the hospital waste hospital waste are major contributors for this so we have now seen that if we can actually control the hospital waste and other things you can actually drop down the climate change and and the you know in the uk for example 2050 they have put uh, zero carbon from the hospital as a, as a uh, date man line and hopefully something that will happen we can advise a kind that and of course we know that climate change produces a dramatic difference in the gut microbiome mm-hmm. and we know that the gut microbiome controls everything in the body yeah. there are 100 trillion bacteria much more than the bacteria mm-hmm. cells we have regular cells so we are 90% bacteria 10% human beings mm-hmm. all of us and bacteria control what we eat how we get digested even the cardiac attacks for example there is evidence now that certain hormones produced by this bacteria can induce uh, heart attacks type of thing you know so all these are there so gut bacteria changes uh, with climate change mm-hmm. especially with hygiene water so and so on so it's also very important that uh, we maintain what was there in nanuram tally otherwise we're going to pay a catastrophe so i think environment is going to be paying a yeah. key role i think yeah. i think we are all on the same page i mean you are all on the same page mm-hmm. on that dr kreb would you like to add anything when it comes to mother and child especially again again hygiene environment because it is going to be an important aspect of the council in context of women and children i think hygiene plays a great role mm-hmm. and um, as we are seeing that you know our environment is changing mm-hmm. climate change is happening we are going to have more and more scarcity of water so we have to save our environment and uh, make sure that we save water yeah. we save the planet mm-hmm. uh, and uh, we inculcate healthy habits we inculcate healthy eating habits and when we talk about gut microbiota because these days everything is being uh, attached health and illness to gut microbiota then a healthy start like breastfeeding exclusively mm. it's one gun with which you can kill so many uh, diseases mm. less risk of infections less infant mortality uh, less under 5 child mortality less diarrhea less pneumonia so i think breastfeeding Uh, so more and more right. more and more cesareans and less vaginal or normal deliveries again a cesarean alters the gut microbiota whereas a normal delivery you have the normal microbiota the vaginal delivery more antibiotics more changes in the gut microbiota wow. more irrational antibiotics i think we have to get away from it so i think healthy lifestyle yes. healthy diet clean environment um safe water and sanitation i think probably are going to make the crux of prevention and uh, healthy life i'm just start uh, taking from what dr claire said dr chandra mai aapke paas aana chahungi ki lifestyle ki baat kare heart mein hum hamesha sunte hain ki prevention is better than cure zyada tar hum yahi sunte hain so lifestyle ke bare mein what would you like to say before we quickly wrap uh, you know when it comes to this council what are the important points yeah so dekhiye lifestyle ka bahut zyada importance hai especially heart mein jaisa aapne abhi already kaha तो hmm. क्या कर सकते हैं हम लोग ये काउंसिल में जो हम लोग डिस्कशन करेंगे इस बारे में ये जरूर आगे रखेंगे कि भाई क्या क्या चीजें करनी चाहिए एज अ डूएबल एक्शन तो उसके अंदर सबसे इम्पोर्टेंट है कि अपना ब्लड प्रेशर कम से कम साल में एक बार जरूर चेक कराएं hmm. 
ये हम लोग एक इस बात को रखेंगे क्योंकि इसके सबके लिए इम्पोर्टेंस है दूसरी चीज़ ये है कि अगर ब्लड प्रेशर हाई है तो उसका ट्रीटमेंट भी करें क्योंकि 90 परसेंट लोग उसका ट्रीटमेंट नहीं करते और सोचते हैं कि दवा खाना ज़्यादा डेंजरस है और ब्लड प्रेशर होना ज़्यादा सही है दूसरी चीज़ स्मोकिंग के बारे में डिस्कशन होगा स्मोकिंग एज अ चेंज इन लाइफ स्टाइल देन द थर्ड वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग इज एक्सरसाइज और एक्टिविटी वो बहुत कम हो गई है इन जनरल अर्बन लाइफ में भी और रूरल में भी वैसे बहुत सारे लोग ये कहते हैं कि गाँव में तो लोग अभी भी चल रहे हैं लेकिन गाँव में भी लोगों ने चलना कम कर दिया वो मोटर बाइक्स पर चलते हैं या कारें भी गाँव में आ गई हैं तो इस तरीके से एक्सरसाइज और एक्टिविटी बहुत कम हो गई उसको बढ़ावा देना है लोगों को ज़्यादा चलने के लिए प्रमोट करना है और चौथी बात यह है कि मेंटल स्ट्रेस यानी जो मानसिक तनाव वाला जो फैक्टर है वो भी एक बड़ा इंपॉर्टेंट है क्योंकि कई बार होते हैं पेशेंट आते हैं हमारे पास कि हमारा तो सब कुछ ठीक था मैंने तो सब चेक कराया ब्लड प्रेशर ठीक है ये ठीक है वो ठीक है तब भी हार्ट अटैक हो गया क्यों क्योंकि उनका मानसिक तनाव का लेवल इतना ज्यादा था कि उसने बॉडी के अंदर इस तरह के चेंजेस लाए जिससे कि हार्ट अटैक हो गया तो ये सारी चीजों को अगर हम करेंगे तो संभवतः हार्ट अटैक और उससे डेंजरस जो कॉन्सिक्वेंसेज होते हैं उनसे बच सकते हैं जी आई थिंक आपने जो कहा लाइफ स्टाइल स्टेइंग एक्टिव ये सब चीजें हमें पता है वी जस्ट नीड टू पुट इट इन आर डेली लाइफ एंड ऑफकोर्स द काउंसिल दैट्स वॉट काउंसिल की यही एफर्ट रहेगी कि ये करने के लिए इंदिरा जी अब मैं आपसे ये सवाल पूछना चाहूंगी आप क्या वो दो तीन पॉइंट्स देना चाहेंगे जो होने चाहिए काउंसिल जो व्हाइट पेपर पर डालेगा वेरी ब्रीफली अमी कल आई डोंट टू वट रवि से दैट अलॉन्ग विथ वट एवर प्रॉब्लम वी हैड ऑन क्लाइमेट चेंज वी हैव ए ह्यूज चेंज इन इंक्रीज पोल्यूशन दैट्स अ मेजर चेंज दैट वी हैव I think the third most important thing is increase of population. The population density is going up. Mm. Therefore, more population, more environmental degradation, more pollution will definitely impact a lot on the climate change, and that actually increases in in the human beings. As we know, even microbial resistance is is increasing because of all this. Mm. We have anxiety, as you mentioned, is increasing in all this. Mm. So these are issues which need to be possibly need to be controlled. Uh, the last thing I would like to say: everything depends on economic issues. Mm. And if you look into the economic aspect of this program, I think we all know that, for example, if you look into diarrhea, diarrhea, the percentage of diarrheic children is maximum in poor households. Mm. As the as uh, you go into middle income or higher income people, the diarrhea incidence goes down. Very clear studies have shown this. As per expenditure on health, this also, if you have a proper, uh, you know, white paper, you can indicate what steps to be taken. The economic improvement take on, and I think as Manish, uh, as uh, Ravi mentioned about the Amrit Kal or the Vikshit Bharat, these programs, they are all very economy linked. Yes, For so example, Amrit Kal is linked to, I think, poor the youth, and we have more than 20. I think uh, 50% of the tw- under 25 is in India. Yes, so we, we have a huge number of youth. Yes, yes so we yes. have a huge number of youth in the country. It's on farmers. It's on women. So I think the four pillars that we have, which Ma- Ravi mentioned on Amrit Kal or on Vikshit Bharat, which gives an economical improvement mm-hmm. by 2047. I think this will. We have to link it to those issues. So I think this will actually help in the government programs. We are really non-health. Hmm. Those are non-health sure, programs. Sure. But I think a white paper like this will actually support. the issues that they are taking and up. these issues need these to be addressed needs critically needs to be supported through yes before we wrap uh, main doctor sahab se aapse ek sawal puchna chahungi malnutrition par kyunki aap itna us wahan kaam karte hain sickle cell anemia ki humne baat ki malnutrition ke liye aap kya points dena chahenge aapko kya lagta hai important that need to be addressed uh, with the council yes malnutrition actually both it is under nutrition and over nutrition hmm. so it is there is over nutrition they don't take good food whatever is necessary but in especially rural and tribal areas it is under nutrition so because of under nutrition there is stunted growth and uh, low birth weight or b- weight will be less so it will affect the child's growth and uh, further progress in so what is main is the socio economic problems for this malnutrition so we have to give them proper advice sure. what sort of uh, food can be taken which is locally available and then uh, we can advise them minimum things which should be taken is iron zinc b complex so in which foods it is available mm. so simply we can sell leafy vegetables and fruits and eggs milk so if it is a holistic approach to the malnutrition which is addressed by the local ngos or iars or government service mm. and improve their 
hygienic status, then all these so many diseases actually can be prevented. Dr. Reddy, just one quick question. I know we've had a, a, a quick thing even because Dr. Indira said and you know, and Ravi had mentioned antimicrobial resistant. A little yes, uh, yes. word on that because that's so, something we yeah, need to talk about. This is very important well. because increasingly and especially if you look at what the WHO also is stating that because of overuse of antibiotics in our country, there is increasing uh, antibacterial resistance that we are seeing, antimicrobial resistance from the bacteria. And this is a dangerous situation because if you look statistics now, we are getting a lot of these uh, um, organisms. In fact, some of them have been wrongly called the Delhi microbe and all that, things like that, unfortunately because of that. <laughs> so what we are finding is this uh, super bugs as they are called are increasing in numbers okay. because we do not have regulations for antibiotic use in our country. And one of the things the council should do or will do is to bring in strong regulations of how antibiotics are prescribed and how they are sold over the counter. Yes. In no other country in the world can you just go and buy an antibiotic from a pharmacy whereas mm. you can do in our country. Mm. This is very unfortunate. So for a lot of viral fevers where it is not necessary antibiotics are given. Mm. So not only the resistance comes but the microbial flora is changed in the gut and yeah. that gives a lot of problems. So I think we should tackle this and one of the important part of this council would be how we should tackle this uh, misuse of antibiotics to prevent antibiotic resistance. Sure, I am sure we are all, all on the same page when it comes to this and uh, like Dr. Chandra, like in fact all of you who have important points here, getting a mental health expert on yeah. board, a pulmonologist to talk about you know for the lung, I think these are very very yeah. critical points. Uh, Ravi, uh, any closing uh, remarks from you? I mean we have had the experts say it all but anything you would like to add? Uh, first of all, I would love to thank each one of them uh, who are there in my panel today as well as my leadership. Uh, I want to end with something very concrete. As we see, like you have the National Stock Exchange mm -hmm. where you can see like how your shares are, you know, trading each day. There needs to be a mechanism so that the India's health can be seen each day and mm -hmm. that can come to our devices and we can see how as a India, as a young India, under this leadership of our Honorable Prime Minister, how we are doing. Like a poor farmer also sees the stock exchange, yeah. a trader also sees a stock exchange. The, so in a similar way, the health stock exchange should come into play, where we can see the national health daily on our, you know, some of the key indicators. This, is, this recommendation can also be a part of uh, the broader recommendations if the, uh, you know, if the experts agree. Well, as we end the show, it's clear that the path to a healthier future lies in a collective commitment to prevention over cure. With a renewed dedication, we need to foster behavioral shifts, promote hygiene practices, and advocate for evidence-based policies. We need to pave the way for a healthier tomorrow for all. That is what the Health and Hygiene Council, made of some of the India's most eminent doctors, aims to do. As we said at the start of the show, this is an ongoing conversation a collective effort at finding solutions and raising awareness to future-proof India. Make India healthy and aware. Until next time, thank you to our esteemed panelists and our viewers for joining us.